Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Autoblog. Most likely you have friends and family that own a particular daily driver that they absolutely love. A vehicle they can't stop raving about and also one in which they're going to purchase again most likely for their next car. And the Lexus RX350 is certainly one of those crossovers that has a great reputation and every single owner you come across it has nothing but great things to say. And I've always wondered why, because this vehicle is in a market where you're going up against the BMW X5, Volvo XC90, Audi Q7, and the Mercedes-Benz GLE. And yet, even though you have those great vehicles, it's the RX350 that's the best selling in this market. And for good reason. You have Toyota reliability, also you have, in my opinion, good looks, but also I think a price point that is most certainly appealing for buyers on a budget. Every time I review a luxury compact crossover on the channel, I receive DMs and comments saying, why don't you ever talk about the Lexus RX350? It's a better vehicle. It also outsells the BMW X3 and Audi Q5. And they're right, it does outsell the X3 and Q5 and actually outsells a lot of vehicles in the $30,000 to $40,000 price range, even though the RX350 starts right around $47,000, $48,000. But I think that's why there's a lot of confusion because a lot of consumers think that the RX350 is a compact crossover when in reality it's a midsize and it's not much smaller than a GLE or Volvo XC90, but you're still receiving the technology and the luxury features that you expect for a vehicle vehicle in this segment. And that's why I'm here. Take a look at the Lexus RX350 to understand why it's so popular here in the US and also to see why if you are looking at buying a luxury compact crossover but you're not really happy that you're spending close to $50,000 and you want something a little bigger, a little more practical and family friendly, then maybe going with the Lexus RX350 might be a great decision. Now before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Herb Chambers Lexus of Sharon in Sharon, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Lexus inventory. I also want to thank Renee for helping set up this review and I'll leave his contact information below if you are looking at buying a new Lexus. Also before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every single time a new review goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. There's very few vehicles on the market today that are held in a higher regard than the Lexus RX, which has been in production for almost 25 years and is one of the first luxury crossovers from a Japanese manufacturer. Despite finding itself in a highly contested market with the bigger European brands, it's the RX that is the best selling amongst its rivals. And with a strong reputation for its luxury first approach, striking looks, and good pricing, that doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. A few questions everyone asks is, why has Lexus been so successful with this midsize crossover? And now on its sixth year for the fourth generation, is it still the go-to option in the luxury SUV market? The answer becomes quite apparent even before you step inside. And if you're still on the fence, you likely won't be after spending a few minutes of time with this crossover. Starting off with pricing, the model in this review is an RX 350 F Sport, which comes in at $50,200 if you opt for all-wheel drive. If the aggressive cosmetic styling and sportier looks aren't a priority or a necessity for you, a base RX350 can be yours for around 47 grand. And that has been a part of a winning formula for Lexus, as they're offering a mid-sized luxury crossover at a cost that undercuts the BMW X5 and Mercedes-Benz GLE. Dimensions are also key for the RX350, as its length is marginally shorter than say a Volvo XC90 for example. However, you can not opt for a three-row variant, giving you an overall length of 197 inches to outclass the X5 and GLE. When it comes to off-road capability, you're looking at right around 8.2 inches of ground clearance to tackle most road conditions Mother Nature throws at you. Getting into the road presence, sharp body lines dominate the entire front fascia, making the RX appear to be sleek and aerodynamic while at the same time standing out in its segment, as some rivals go for a boxier shape. From a cosmetic perspective, everything is free-flowing, 
from the headlight housings to the gloss black grille and fenders. And despite these aesthetic features not being interconnected, there's a lot of continuity that radiates a sense of class. By opting for the F Sport, a subtle hint of sportiness makes its way under the RX 350, as you'll have more gloss black accents and a minor alteration to the front grille. LED headlights and fog lights will help provide better illumination at night on dimly lit back roads, while at the same time modernizing the exterior. Moving over to the side profile, the S Sport will come equipped with 20 inch wheels for a more upscale appearance, which is an upgrade over the 18s that come standard for the RX 350. Usually with bigger tire sizes, ride quality is negatively affected, yet cruising on back roads or even on the highway was smooth and enjoyable. Adding some color contrast is gloss black power folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators, giving this crossover a dynamic look. And of course, you will have blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, the RX follows the same design path as most crossovers in the Lexus lineup, with a sporty and angular rear fascia. In conjunction with the lower roofline, you will be sacrificing cargo space. However, there's nothing boring about the outward look for the RX350, and even though it may not be considered a sport back as the seat pillars are somewhat traditional to this segment, there's still a unique appearance that makes the RX stand out in this market. LED taillights and the dual exhaust outlets being molded into the bumper helps give this crossover a modern and sleek demeanor, and while this generation is entering its sixth year of production, it is aged gracefully. Under the hood, the RX350 is powered by a 3.5 liter V6 engine that puts out 295 horsepower and 268 pound-feet of torque and is paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. We've become accustomed to crossovers being athletic and quick. However, even with the F-Sport badges, the RX manages to go from 0 to 60 in 7 seconds, which is by no means the fastest in this segment but is actually identical to the Mercedes-Benz GLE 350. Lexus has always emphasized luxury and ride quality, even though the outward appearance would suggest otherwise. And while enthusiasts may be disappointed, the RX is objectively a great road trip cruiser. For the drivetrain, front-wheel drive does come standard, but as mentioned earlier, you can't opt for all-wheel drive. For fuel efficiency, you can expect to receive right around 21 miles per gallon in the city, and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. But if you prefer being more economical, Lexus does offer a hybrid model to give you 31 miles per gallon in the city and 28 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, our model has the optional power adjustable heated and ventilated circuit red leatherette seats for both the driver and passenger. And for a synthetic leather material, the quality was quite impressive and in no way feels cheap like some competitors. The driver's side will be three position memory for added convenience. And thanks to this RX350 being an F Sport, bolstering is aggressive to keep you in place when cruising on back roads. In front of you, there will be a mixture of digital and analog gauges for a traditional layout with an information display found on the left side, providing statistics for fuel economy and tire pressure monitoring. While not equipped on this model, you can opt for a head-up display for an additional $600. Then moving over to the infotainment system, we have the standard 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. But with the navigation package, you'll receive the upgraded 12.3-inch screen and you can also add the optional 15-speaker Mark Levinson sound system to amplify the audio of your favorite music. By offering a touchscreen, using this head unit is easier than ever and will likely be more user-friendly compared to the trackpad found on the center console. But the quick access buttons should help keep your eyes on the road. As always, you will have a rear backup camera with trajectory, with the ability to receive a top view camera to aid in parking. Below, you'll find the buttons and dials for your dual zone climate control, front and rear defrosters, and also the volume and tuning knobs. As we make our way towards the center console, there will be a cubby with a wireless phone charging pad and two USB inputs. Then tucked away in front of the gear shifter are the buttons for the three level heated and ventilated seats. 
Then closer to the passenger side is the drive mode selector, which surprisingly makes a noticeable difference, especially in sport mode, and steering input and gear shifts become more active to create an engaging driving experience. For the center storage compartment, you'll have plenty of room for small items, and it's here where you'll have two additional USB outlets. And rounding out the front seating area, on our model will be a power moonroof to let in some natural light to the interior. Now for passengers in the back, we're gonna start off on the driver's side. And this seat is adjusted to someone of my height, around 5'5", and I have an abundant amount of legroom to work with here. Also one thing to note is with the roof line or how much headroom you have. And even though the RX350 does have a lower roof line compared to say a Mercedes-Benz GLE 350 or a BMW X5, you still could sit back here pretty comfortably if you're on the height of 5'9 or 5'10. So even though it's a bit sportier when it comes to the design, you're not really sacrificing a lot when it comes to interior space. Now for the center seat, the floor is pretty much flat, so that's going to give you the ability to fit a third person back here, especially if you have three kids. It should be more than adequate. However, I do think though that when it comes to shoulder room for average size adults, that's where it might be a bit of a squeeze, but legroom is certainly not going to be an issue at all in this vehicle, as interior space is really one of the best I've seen in this price range and segment. And then. On the passenger side, this seat is adjusted further back. It's also on a recline, and I still have a few inches of legroom to work with here. But also one thing to note is that with the front seats for the RX350, they're curved when it comes to the backs of these seats. So if you do have someone around the height of six feet tall and above, you're not really sacrificing that legroom. Also, the second row seats do slide forwards and backwards, which is gonna give you more practicality for the cargo area, but also if you do have extra luggage with you and you're forced to sit forwards, because of these front row seats being curved, you're not gonna feel as claustrophobic. Obviously, this is not ideal, but I do think that it's enough room where you're not gonna be getting squished back here on shorter drives. Also back here on our model, we do have two rare air vents, to go along with two USB inputs. And rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power lift gate. And inside, behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 17 cubic feet of room. And in my opinion, I think that's a bit understated because this looks a lot more spacious than the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, which had a similar cargo area. And this is also way more spacious than my Volkswagen GTI, which also has around 18 cubic feet of room. Now, it might be because of the lower roof line, more of that sport back rear end that might be taking away from that cargo area. However, I was able to fit all my camera gear and then some. So I think that if you are going on a road trip with the family, you can fit probably three to four bags of luggage, which I think is more than adequate for a vehicle of this size and for a smaller family. One feature that I really like about the RX350 is that you will have quick release tabs found on the right side of the rear cargo area, and by tugging on them, the second row seats will fold conveniently and effortlessly, giving you around 32 cubic feet of room to work with. Obviously, that's not going to be class leading in this market, especially for mid-sized crossovers, but taking consideration that for a base price for an RX350, you're looking at paying below $50,000, which is really around the same price range as some compact luxury crossovers. So dimensions are going to be very similar. And if you don't plan on going uh, on longer road trips very frequently or packing up the RX350 all the time, then I do think that this is going to be practical enough for you on a daily basis. Also back here, you will have a rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear with you or anything of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. Okay. All right, for a vehicle that has a zero to 60 time of around seven seconds, doesn't really feel like it. I love the gear shifts of this vehicle, wow. Now when you think about horsepower, performance, and zero to 60 times in this particular market, and you have people up in arms over saying, oh, it's not the most athletic, it's not the quickest. Well, let's just remember one thing here is that 
A 7 second 0 to 60 time is basically the same as a Mercedes Benz GLE 350. And because this has a V6, I think it feels a lot faster than it really is. In sport mode, I really like the steering input. It's nicely weighted. It doesn't feel too sporty, but it definitely gives you a lot of feedback for sure. Now let's get into why you should look at a Lexus RX 350, because this is a segment where you have the Mercedes-Benz GLE, BMW X5, possibly even the Audi Q7, and I get a number of DMs throughout the year saying, oh, I'd rather have an RX 350 over a BMW X3. Why are you saying that this particular model is better selling when the RX 350 is the best selling model in really the luxury crossover market? And it's because the RX 350 is not a compact crossover. It's actually a midsize. And you certainly feel that. When you're behind the wheel, it feels much bigger than some of its rivals in its price range. Because when you're looking at a starting price at around $47,000, now you can cross shop that with an X3 or a Q5. And now I'm beginning to understand why so many consumers look at the RX 350 because to me, I think this is a great value. You're getting a vehicle that is decently sized, but also you get that luxury aspect as well. Whereas if you're looking at buying an X5 or even a GLE, you're spending close to fifty-five dollars to $60,000. So this right here is a better bang for your buck. Now, when it comes to the interior quality for the Lexus RX, this is one of the quieter vehicles I have driven so far on the channel. When I had turned on the RX 350, I couldn't hear the engine outside of the cold start, and it sounds very similar to a hybrid or even an electric vehicle. And then that translates to the interior. This interior is really quiet, but also um, when it comes to the soft touch materials, it's everywhere on the armrests and the door rests. And it's just a really great place to be. Also, when it comes to front vision, you do have plenty of it. A pillars are somewhat aggressive, but it does make up for it with this little side window. And then with the side mirrors, they are placed in a good spot so I can see what's in my blind spots. But when it comes to the rear view, I think the RX 350 has a very interesting shape and it does kind of take away what you can see behind you. When it comes to the interior layout for the RX 350, it's actually pretty driver centric, more so than the older Lexuses. My only criticism for this vehicle, it's gonna be the only criticism I have for this entire review, is the trackpad. I just wish Lexus would go with a touchpad and a Roy dial because now that we have a touchscreen, it makes using the infotainment system so much easier. But if we had a Roy dial, it'd be a lot easier than the trackpad. That's my only issue I have with Acuras and Lexuses. If we just got rid of that aspect for the interior, I think it would be much more appealing for people who look at Audis, BMWs, and Mercedes-Benz products. Some of the minor details also stand out to me as well, like the clock in the dashboard, which is a nice touch, really gives this vehicle a classy look, but also all the buttons are within arm's reach, everything is within arm's reach, and it just really gives you that driver-centric feel, but also more importantly, it feels like a fighter jet cockpit where you have a wide center console and you do feel as though that the interior wraps around you. So I certainly like that, especially for a vehicle that is not from Europe. And I understand that as journalists, we go way too far with that. I think we put BMW, Audi and Mercedes Benz on a pedestal and often we forget about the Japanese brands, which are really pretty great vehicles in their own right, where they give you a good amount of luxury and also I think a nice balance of technology, but also that analog feel as well with physical buttons. Let's do a quick acceleration here. I love the sound of the V6 with this crossover and Having driven the Mercedes-Benz GLE 350, my biggest concern with that vehicle was that it just wasn't that fun or engaging to drive. I was begging for more power. And yet with the RX 350, I got a good amount of performance. The eight-speed automatic shifts really nicely. And I'm not sitting here begging for anything more. I now understand why so many people look at buying an RX 350, even though they might not be looking for performance, they're gonna get it, even though it's not the most powerful crossover, it just has a nice linear acceleration. And you get a good amount of torque too, which is a bit surprising, just because relatively speaking, your torque numbers are pretty low. 
Also, I like the beefy steering wheel where we have aggressive 10 and 2 positions. Also, you will have paddle shifters as well as so you can roll through the gears. This is pretty nice. This vehicle is really nice. Driving on the back roads, the steering and handling is really nice. And even on these horrible bumpy roads, the suspension just takes them with ease. definitely a great daily driver if you do live up here in New England where our roads are notoriously horrible but this is just a great daily driver and also with the softness of the interior and of course the suspension I think it's a great uh, road trip vehicle as well it's one in which you want to load up the family and maybe go up to New Hampshire or Maine especially now this time of year with the fall foliage this is definitely the vehicle you want to do it in but also you have the option to go with the RX350L for an optional third row. And it will give you some extra length, better practicality as well. And I just think that what Lexus is offering here is an all around great vehicle. Might not be the most sporty, might not be the most aggressive when it comes to driving dynamics. But if you're specifically looking for a luxury crossover, I think this is definitely one of the better ones out there. Because you could say, well, it will kind of remind you of a Volvo XC90. But the Volvo XC90, in my mind, is too soft of a vehicle. It's not one in which is going to give you the driving dynamics that you might be looking for. Whereas even though this is luxury first, the steering input and even the driving dynamics to a very slight degree are still engaging. And that's one thing that I can certainly appreciate about the Lexus RX350. Now, one thing that I did touch on very lightly was the available package that you have to work with with the RX350. And really more importantly is that Lexus offers individualized packages where you can't go with the full panoramic sunroof. You can go with full LED headlights for a more upscale look. You can also go with the fog lights as well. That is optional. And that's something that you don't really see for a vehicle in this price range. Usually that's reserved for Porsches and other more premium luxury brands. And it really gives you that ability to customize it and personalize it to your liking. And you know, if you want to have the full 12.3 inch touchscreen, you can. You can go with the Mark Levinson sound system. But what I would recommend is to overlook the dynamic handling package because this vehicle is not going to be very athletic. It's not really agile in that way. Uh, yes, it feels nice, it does feel planted, and it's a bit more impressive than a Mercedes Benz GLE 350, but you're not really gaining anything by going with the dynamic handling package. And I would say use that money wisely and get some extra individualized features that will help amplify your driving experience. Uh, that's the only thing that I would say if you are looking at buying one is really make sure that you choose the right packages and make sure that you get the features that you're looking for. And I like the fact that you do have a wide range of options to choose from because it definitely makes this vehicle seem a bit more luxurious and upscale but also even when you throw in those extra packages you're still walking out the door with a vehicle that's probably more affordable than a base BMW X5 or Mercedes-Benz GLE which I think that's one of the reasons why so many people look at buying one of these uh, Lexuses. So after about a 30 minute test drive have my questions been answered about the RX350 because to me I've always wondered why so many Americans love this crossover. Is it because that you have a lot of consumers that are hopping in from say a Toyota RAV4 or a Highlander or maybe even a Honda CRV or Pilot? But I think it also comes down to the fact that if you are on a stricter budget and you're looking for reliability, more importantly, you're getting Toyota reliability, and you're looking for a great value, the RX350 is certainly up there for sure because when you're looking at spending around fifty to fifty-two thousand dollars, even with the Esport package, you're getting the luxury aspect. You're getting nice, comfortable seats, which I haven't really talked about on this test drive. Which do provide a good amount of bolstering. That's why I would recommend going with the Esport package. But also, when you compare it to rivals such as the Volvo XC90, BMW X5, Audi Q7 or even the Mercedes-Benz GLE 350, you're saving money. And that's more important, especially right now as well. But this is the way Lexus has always been for the last almost 24, 25 years now. And when it undercuts other brands, but you still don't really sacrifice anything, 
It's hard to justify spending six to ten thousand dollars more for a German vehicle when you're really basically getting the same thing. I understand that this doesn't have a full digital gauge cluster or maybe all the same technology you will find in a uh, you know BMW X5 or GLE 350, but ultimately you're getting the driving dynamics. I think could easily rival a base GLE and also X5, but also you're getting the interior comfort as well. And you're not spending that much, relatively speaking. You're spending the same amount of money that you would find for a compact crossover, a luxury compact crossover. And really, you're getting, I think, a bigger vehicle that also provides a good amount of value and, I think, a decent amount of performance, even though that's not what this vehicle is prioritizing. So, I don't know. Uh, you know, after spending a lot of time with this vehicle, I'm pretty impressed, actually, because honestly, I was like, oh, it's an RX350. I, you know, is, is it going to give me uh, a feedback and driving dynamics that I'm going to be raving about? Am I going to walk away thinking, you know, it's not as good as other vehicles I've test driven? But honestly, with the V6, also one of the last V6s you can find in this segment, uh, especially at this price range, but also uh, you have an 8-speed automatic transmission, which pairs up very well with this vehicle. So I think it's just overall, uh, what the RX350 is offering is really a great package. And I do think it's definitely worth taking a look at. So in closing, I think what we have discovered here is that the Lexus RX350 really is a solid crossover in its segment, despite the fact that it's not as practical as a GLE or Volvo XC90, especially when it comes to cargo space. But I think when it comes to interior quality, interior room, also just the interior layout as well, it's most certainly on par. For a lot of buyers, they're not really happy with everything going digital and having this buttonless layout. Whereas with the RX350, you don't have a full digital gauge cluster. You do have, at least for this model, we have an 8-inch touchscreen, and we have physical buttons and dials for the dashboard. Now, of course, as I said during the test drive, not a huge fan of the trackpad, but it certainly is a lot better now that we have that touchscreen. I would recommend going with a 12.3-inch touchscreen, though, to really modernize the interior. But what really genuinely surprised me was the driving dynamics because all you hear about with this vehicle is that it's not the quickest, it's really slow, it's not really enjoyable. And then when I accelerated, when I was driving on the back roads, uh, the performance is really good. Even though it's no faster than a Mercedes-Benz GLE, I think it's more engaging. And I'm not sure exactly why. It might be the seats, it might be the more aggressive steering wheel that's really drawing me in, but the accelerations were smooth, the gear shifts were crisp, and I think it also has something to do with the V6 as well. It really helps uh, make the driving experience far more enjoyable. But ultimately though, it comes down to pricing because when you're looking at spending around $50,000 for an F-Sport and then you can throw on some extra packages, you're still spending less than what you're gonna find for a base GLE 350 4Matic or a BMW X5 X-Drive. And I think that when you're spending around $50,000, you're getting a good amount of value, especially when this is priced in the same range as say a BMW X3 or Audi Q5. And when you start looking at the size of this vehicle, with it being more family friendly, when you have the interior comfort and you have a good amount of technology to work with, it's very difficult to justify spending the same amount for a smaller vehicle when you can upgrade to an RX350 and get everything you're looking for. But also, as I said during the test drive, is that you can really add on individualized packages and also individualized features where you can make this vehicle your own. You can customize it. And we just don't see that for most vehicles that are outside of Germany, but also non-premium luxury brands as well. So at the end of the day, I'd say definitely take this vehicle out for a test drive, experience it for yourself, because I do think that just like many Americans who are buying this vehicle and are very happy with it, I think you will be too. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.